They couldn't pay for it, and that is a tragedy for our democratic system. The Honourable Chris Farfoy. Speaker, can I begin um, by um, uh, acknowledging uh, and congratulating our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Jacinda yeah, yeah. Ardern, the boss, um, and Clark, a uh, former flatmate of mine in my student days, but we'll leave it at that, um, for, the, uh, for the arrival of um, young Neve uh, last week. Uh, we hope that they are relaxing at home, uh, enjoying some time off. Um, a, a change of mode for the Prime Minister, but uh, well deserved. Um, can I just um, begin by responding to uh, one comment from the previous speaker around transparency uh, and um, put that into context of one example that has stuck out for me and I remember very, uh, very well uh, from the last term of Parliament, where all through some documents about um, a housing roadshow just two lines were deleted, Mr Speaker, and for the, for the life of me I couldn't understand in the context of the documents why these two lines had been redacted from uh, all these documents. So, you know, we could have left it alone or we could have pursued it, um, but we did pursue it, but we still didn't get uh, any, um, any traction and, and the lines were redacted, apart from where one official, I think, made a mistake uh, and didn't redact um, these two lines in an email, and it said... Um, we want to make sure that there's this government-funded roadshow because one of the National Party MPs at the time was thinking about running for a by-election and wanted to lift her profile. Now, I wondered why. Why would you want to have that redacted? Uh, and why would the government want that redacted? So if you're going to start throwing around stones around about transparency, uh, Mr Speaker, you'd just be, better be a little bit careful about your track record uh, in the previous nine years. So... As well as acknowledging uh, the boss, I'd also like to acknowledge one of my colleagues uh, in the House who was with us today because we went and did a tour of the Wairarapa together, um, and that is um, my friend Kieran McInulty. We started, our day, we, started, <laughs> we started our day in Carton, went to Marston, finished it up in Daddyburg, and one day, uh, in about two and a half years, Mr Speaker, he will make a great Member of Parliament from Wairarapa yeah. because the current guy is making an absolute meal of it. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, we also heard from the previous speaker about the dismantling of what we hold true here in New Zealand. But I just want to take a moment of time from last week where the National Party went back to the 80s uh, and Alistair Scott, the current member uh, of Parliament for Wairarapa, I hope he's not the policy chair for them, Mr Speaker, <laughs> made some utterings in this House which, if you're worried about accusations of dismantling from this side of the house, this guy's taking it to, the another, to another level. In the front page of the Wider Upper Times Age at the weekend, it's, and I say, and I quote, National's Associate Finance Spokesperson is unapologetic for saying governments shouldn't own hospitals and questioning whether they should own schools and says there needs to be a debate about what government should own. So if that's a debate that's happening in the National Party caucus room in 2020, we know what's going to happen. We absolutely know what's going to happen because the, the chair of the National Party Policy Council, Alistair Scott, and the, and the National Party caucus is talking about selling schools and selling hospitals and not owning roads again. That's a pretty, pretty solid three, three plank campaign for them to go out. And I absolutely know the result that will happen. But, Mr Speaker, he doubled down. Oh, he doubled down. Oh, Alistair Scott didn't, say, didn't stop there. He said, just imagine if we sold $30 billion worth of housing assets and gave it to 65,000 tenants and said, see you later, find a place to live. Oh, so, not content with selling hospitals and schools, he said we should just give away the housing estate. This is the man from Wairarapa, who no one recognises in his own electorate, who is driving the policy platform of the National Party for the next two and a half years. If you, it, it's very rich, Mr Speaker, to sit on that side of the House and accuse us of dismantling what has been built up over decades when the policy chair of the National Party from the MP for Wairarapa says we should sell the hospitals sell the schools and sell the houses. If that's what the National Party wants to do and put, to pull its policy together for the next two and a half years, then I say bring on 2020. Right. Because on July the 1st, not too far away, in the short space of time we've had in government in this coalition, uh, we're going to start helping families in a very meaningful way. Right. On July the 1st, hundreds of thousands of more families will get support through fam uh, Best Start, New Mothers, 
uh, and families will get another $75, thousands of more families will get $75, $75 more a week. So, Mr Speaker, uh, if you want to talk about dismantling, talk about the guys who want to sell the houses, the hospitals and the schools. <laughs> just, just, bef just before I call a member, I, I just want to indicate to Matt King that you're not allowed to eat in the house. <laughs> Order. Mr Speaker. The Honourable Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Call me Nostradamus, but I predict... Thank you very much.